I, there's so many entangled threads in this episode of Mad at the Internet that if I were to just bounce around, I'd lose my train of thought. So let's start with the obvious. The uh, uh, There was a would-be assassin who fired uh, bullets at Donald J. Trump. Let's take a look at the footage. What happened to our country? Probably 20 million people. He's looking, by the way, his head is turned to look at a giant, enormous printout of the rate of immigration versus, let's go to flame chart, the rate of immigration versus the rate of uh, illegal immigration, showing tens of millions of illegal immigrants. So his head is you know, turned to look at this graph. Chart. That chart's a couple of months old, and if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened oh. I knew the very second that I that when I saw this footage when he flinched take a look at what happened that way he freezes and grabs himself like you would with a with a bug bite if you watch any footage of people getting shot that's just how they react there's like you're you're just apparently the human body's reaction to being shot is like profound confusion where you just like freeze up and like what the fuck is that um, not too dissimilar from a bug bite. When I when I saw that, I'm like, that is a real gunshot. He got shot, and it's it's hard to tell from this angle. Uh, but this is the footage that sh got shared around. Um, I I was uh, concerned that it might have been in the neck because he is grabbing the side of his head, where you know possibly his neck. But no, it's his ear, and then he hits the ground. <laughs> Everybody hits the ground. Uh, he gets covered in bodies. There's confusion, screaming, anarchy. Um, all sorts of memes about this. I'm just going to gloss over it on the broadest terms. The way I can, the way I do these streams, especially when there's something very contemporary like this happening, is I just try to like set the because I I do my streams late. You know what I mean? So like this is already happened. This happened on Saturday. It's already been out for a couple days now. Everyone's kind of processed it, and there's not really too much I can add to. One of the most significant political events of our lifetimes, right? So I can only kind of lay what we already know on the ground and serve as a contempor as a basis uh, for future viewers, our listeners, going through the archives and think, like, oh, so that's how it was at the moment. Um, it was immediately obvious that this was an assassination attempt, which makes some of the other things I'm about to show you really funny uh, or depressing, depending on how you want to look at it. And it kind of, I think, cemented in a lot of people's minds, like, yeah, there's no way that we can peacefully resolve the incongruences of the American people. At this point in time, it's sort of just decided uh, it's over. We're going to continue this charade a little bit longer until everybody is ready, set about how we want this to go down. Um but I think I think nobody nobody's like oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna one day wake up and you know people are all gonna be on the same page again and we're all gonna be happy happy and happily ever after I think this is kind of like yeah it's not even like a surprise it's just like yeah okay for sure we we got it now um so in in oh I do need the news hamster this is a very very the news hamster needs to be here for this uh, shocking event. So, there's that. Hamster ready. Hamster observing. Hamster, sorry, the hamster was, uh, he didn't like to see, he doesn't like to see violence, so he didn't want to see the gunshots, but now we're past that. So he was rushed off stage. Um, I don't have this footage because it's not really that important that you see it, I guess. Uh, but there was a sniper that was positioned overlooking the roof, and this, this, conference or this rally was held at a venue that had only one roof that overlooked it so there was only one potential place that a sniper could reasonably without entering the convention get to to shoot at the president and apparently this um young man who is severely autistic looking scaled a ladder and then a police officer a regular police officer um confronted him and this guy pointed a gun at him and the police officer's like, oh, okay, I guess I don't want to be shot. So he left. That's what I've heard. I don't know if that's true. Uh, then the sniper crawled across a roof. And the S Secret Service agent, 
on the opposing roof is dead ass fucking staring at him the entire time. The witnesses saw that he was crawling along his belly an obvious sight. Like just imagine that you're a sniper and you're sitting there on the roof and you see this guy crawling across the only roof that could possibly shoot the president. And he has a gun in his hand or something suspicious looking. And you're thinking like, is he going to shoot at the president? What's he doing over there? And that's literally what happened. And apparently, I mean, you could infer based on the situation that he was not permitted to fire to protect the president. For whatever reason, uh, this person was not given authorization to shoot first um, and neutralize this threat that was like very blatantly just sneaking up on on them um, in plain fucking sight. So that's a little bit confusing. And then as soon as the shots rang out, uh, the the sniper uh, killed him. So that's bullshit. That's a complete lie, bro. You could <laughs> you can literally see this guy staring at him, and there were witness accounts that he was crawling across the roof. Um. So, that is one theory. And keep in mind, this is a, a current event, so this is just how it looks, you know. Obviously, we have to trust the science and trust the government and trust that the Secret Service is going to conduct a true and honest, thorough audit of, of um, what happened and how this could have happened and so on and so forth. Uh, but from current situations, it looks like they just were afraid to shoot, and then uh, that almost cost Donald Trump his life. Um, let's see, what is that? Here's how they handled it. Uh, my question, now, when I saw this in real time, I was thinking, oh my god, this is just like Star Wars. This is Dragonfire Don. And I think based on that name, that this is a guy who actually supports Trump. He's just retarded because he posts on Reddit. So he says, fuck, this feels so eerily like Star Wars, Revenge of the Sith. Quote, the, I, this has to be a Palpatine quote, I imagine. So it says, The attempt on my life has left me scarred and deformed, but I assure you my resolve has never been stronger. I honestly hope that Trump isn't going to become someone like Emperor Palpatine. This was my they literally word for word my exact thoughts when this happened. And thankfully, Dragonfire Dawn articulately uh, uh, assembled this into words for me. CNN had different words for this. Uh, their statement was, Trump falls down on the ground, falls to the ground on stage at rally. Unclear what is happening. It took, now, okay, so everyone saw this, and it's like you can, <laughs> you can hear the gunshots, bro. There's, not, there's no uh, lack of clarity in what the fuck is happening with this. I found this archive, by the way, thanks to Snopes. Fact check, did CNN publish headline, Secret Service rushes to Trump offstage after he falls at rally? The answer, it's true. Now, the context is that CNN was doing their journalistic due diligence and ensuring that their facts were straight before reporting to the American public that Donald Trump was almost assassinated. Uh, that's how they contextualize being fucking sloppy and shitty. Um... But here's the fun part down here. Uh, da, da, da. So they explain the timeline of how they publish this as soon as it happens, saying we don't know what the fuck's happening. And then they clarify, it is the ethical responsibility of the news coverage. I'm to try to spin this. <laughs> like, emergency, emergency, Trump almost murdered. What do we do? Um... You got Mr. Shekelstein raising his hands and says, do we lie about it? Can we just say that um, it didn't happen? Like, no, no, man, there's witnesses, and it was all live-streamed and shit. And Mr. Goldberg raises his hand and says, uh, why, do, why, do we, why do we make this about guns and gun safety? Can we make it about gun safety? And he's like, okay, we'll do that. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. He says, well, well, and then Mr. Silver, Silverberg obviously also inter interjects and says, well, what if... What if we make it a, a combination that because of something Trump did, he slipped and fell? You know, we can roll with that and say, <laughs> say that it was his fault somehow. And then they decided against that. Like, okay, let's just cover it and then let's hardline this to about guns and about mental health and about a democracy. That's it. And that's how it continued. Uh, this was, by the way, live coverage, I think, from CNN regarding the assassination attempt. Let's take a listen to what they have to say. 
Donald Trump and the people around him perceive themselves to be under threat. And that's all that matters. That is, that is not legitimate. That is wrong. Um, you hear the screams from the audience. People um, are terrified. It's a really low quality clip. Um, so yeah, the the real the real danger here is that people are going to be galvanized to vote for Trump. What kind of people? Well, let's just refer to them as the fifty cent demographic. Will surviving gunfire be Donald Trump's next appeal to black voters? On Forbes, this article I hunted down and I archived this. People screen capped it, but I um. It was taken down so quickly, but it was still in the Google search results for the name. So then I pulled up the archive on the Wayback Machine, and then I archived that. So now we have a real copy of this that I uh, have a triple, quadruple archived. Shots were fired at a Trump campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. The former president narrowly escaped. He emerged bloody, but fortunately not critically injured. Quote, President Trump thanks law enforcement and forced responders, blah, blah, blah. Will Trump seize the apparent assassination attempt against him as an opportunity to meaningfully address the epidemic of gun violence in America? Will he deem unacceptable the dangers to which as citizens are exposed as they go to schools? Um, Butler is less than the north, our north of Pittsburgh. It isn't an urban center, but many big cities are in the large numbers of black Americans reside, have long been plagued with inexcusably high levels of gun violence. FBI data shows that black people in Pittsburgh are 14 times more likely to die by gun homicide than, uh... Then are whites. Okay, that's just a clumsy sentence. Then whites, I think it's whites are. Then whites are in the place affectionately known as the Seal City. Why did they write like this, journalists? You can just say, like, black people are more 14 times more likely to get shot than white people. But when a journal of types it says, people in Pittsburgh are 14 times more likely to die by gun homicide than are whites and the place affectionately known as the Steel City. Like, you can't just write that like a fucking normal sentence. Like, 14 times, that's the number. Pittsburgh, that's the city. Mm -mm, we gotta make this shit fucking gay. On the other side of the Commonwealth, Philadelphia gun homicide rate was 30.8 30 fatalities. Dude, that's like, that's like Panama City levels of, of violence. Blacks comprise the city's single largest racial group. They're five times more likely to die by gunfire than are whites. Milwaukee, where this year's Republican National Convention is being held, has the sixth highest homicide by firearm rate in the nation. There, blacks are 6.7 times more likely to be shot and killed than whites are. The best part about this? Look at this. Sean Harper is the author. This guy... Let me um, pull up his profile. Because the, the real fucking punchline here is the, uh, is the, is the, the, um, his, his, like, title. Sean Harper, former contributor, former contributor, he contributed this, like, three days ago. Are you, is he fired? Have you let the, <laughs> have they fired this guy because of this article? He literally just posted this. Why is he a former contributor? Oh my God. Another home, another jobless black man fired by racist. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion author. And uh, this, this article, by the way, is just fucking gone now in case you're curious. Is he seriously just fired? I'm, I'm, I'm actually really curious. I want to go into the Wayback Machine and see if it says former, like. Oh my god. No, what is this? Access denied? Don't you fucking access deny me? Is the Wayback Machine just blocked? What is this? Okay, here, on the 23rd of July, 2022. Well, that's way too far back. No, wait. This is July 10th, 2024, and it says contributor. And then, after July 10th, with his last article being, Dish Track Season was ultimately good for hip-hop culture and business, the only other article he possibly could have written in the two days after that 
is this one about, will black people vote for Donald Trump now because he got shot? And now he's a former contributor. They legit, straight up, fucking fired my homie because he wrote an article saying that black people are more likely to vote for a white guy that's been shot at because they relate to it. Forbes dropped this fucker like a hot potato and deleted his article. Look, because you can even see the latest article that they still have up is the diss track season was ultimately good for hip-hop culture and business. So the only other article that he's written, for sure, is this one. And they fired him. <laughs> can I open, like, his LinkedIn and see his history? Like, does it say July 2024? Oh, I can't see his profile without being signed in. That is really funny. That's a that's a live Matty fact for everybody, okay? That's... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, brother. You, fl you flew too close to the sun with that one. <laughs> I respect the journalism, though. Um, so this is the victim, just to give you an idea. There were people that died. Um, the guy that fired missed Trump, but he's in a crowded auditorium. So two people died. One of them is this guy. Um, Corey... Comperator and the family. This is why it says yesterday time stopped, and when it started again, my family and I were living in a real life nightmare. What was supposed to be an exciting day that we had all looked forward to, especially my dad, turned to the most traumatizing experiences someone could imagine. This is his daughter. So that's him, fifty year old man, likes hunting, has kids, likes to go fishing. It's a nice bass he's got there, and. uh I don't want to read through his whole obituary. He's like a real person. He's not like a crazed asshole. He's not a crazed gunman. He just gets shot in the random. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.